Hi there, my name is Noah. I'm here to talk to you today about the sidebar. For me, when I build websites, there this is a part of the site that oftentimes will be populated with chunks of, of HTML content that are used over and over, page by page. Sometimes this chunk will be on a page, sometimes this one, sometimes this one, sometimes none of these. But oftentimes, I'll want to reuse content over and over again. Historically, the way that I used to do this was that I had created uh, template variables in the back end of each website, uh, one for the top, one for the middle, and one for the bottom sidebar chunk. And this was because I didn't have the way of sorting uh, the chunks in a way um, because Frankly, my skill set wasn't good enough at the time. All along, I always envisioned a, a time where it would get easier and more intuitive for my clients and for I to manage the data. Um, the, the concept that we're working towards here is one where we can resort these. And the reason why that's cool is it gets us to move from an interface that's big and bulky with a lot of different check boxes and a lot of different inputs to one input. And also it's sortable, which I think is super cool. So you can change it page by page. And uh, if I do change these and hit save and then go and preview the content again, you'll notice it'll only have two and that they're reordered. And uh, that's kind of what we're working towards here. Um, and I just kind of wanted to take you step by step through the process to see how to make it and uh, Hopefully you'll be able to use this in a fashion that helps you save time and uh, a lot of work uh, The first thing that you're going to want to do is head over to my website if you if I lose you which is probable <laughs> feel free to head over to the site and do some heavy reading and hopefully get a lot out of it the first thing you'll need to do is to download this the zip file that I've that I've added after you've downloaded this uh, zip file and saved it on your computer then extract it what you'll see inside there's a couple of folders one of them is manager if you were to open that up you'll see a folder for TVs and inside of that you'll see custom TV sort which is my version of this custom TV and then you'll also see another one which is mood tools based which is uh, written by Stefan, who authored the TV categorized uh, tabs plugin, which is super cool. Um, and his version is more programmatic than mine, meaning that you can use it multiple times per page, and you can set which category the the chunks get pulled from. Uh, in the description of the template variable, it's not hard coded into this file like mine is. So his is a little bit uh, more configurable. You'll also see the chunk parser uh, .php file which is your snippet. So you can copy and paste the code from here into the snippet which you'll need later. In the assets folder you'll also see um, the TV categorized tabs folder. This is important. You know my Custom TV wasn't working smoothly with his plugin, and he was super nice and and uh, fixed this file to work with the custom input type. And so you'll need to also uh, drag and drop this up into your um, website in the event that you're using that plugin. Cool. So now that we've seen what's inside these files, all you need to do is select the two folders and then FTP them up here. And it'll add the files in the correct places. Basically the first step that you're going to need to do after that is you're going to need to make a, uh, a new template variable that's going to need to have all of these parameters. Now, the first thing you'll need to do is name it our custom TV and this spelling is important and it is case sensitive so make sure you spell it just like this. Um, you know the caption doesn't matter. Uh, the input type really does matter. So make sure it's on custom input type. And then notice this code here. Um, you're going to want to make sure that it's everything is just exactly the way that it's spelled here. But um, you'll type this in 
And then the next thing that you're going to need to do is in the widget, you're going to need to make sure that it's a delimited list and that the delimiter is a comma. And you're going to need to make sure that you attach it to the template. And then what you're going to do is click Save. The next thing that you're going to need to do is head over to your chunks. And then for one of these new chunks that you want to appear in your sidebar, you're going to want to open that up. And if you don't already have a sidebar category made, uh, then create a new category and name it sidebar. And basically what this will do will enable us to uh, create the category from which the chunks uh, will get pulled. And I'll kind of show you how that all works in just a second. Uh, and then what you're going to want to do is head to each of the chunks that you want to, to get pulled from. And by pulled from, what I'm saying is that uh, in this field, all of that category sidebar, this custom input type is going to look inside that category, pull all the chunks out of it, and use those as the chunks that you can choose to exist on your sidebar. So make sure that anything that you want to be able to choose is named, you know, put inside of that category, which for us is going to be called sidebar. And that is important, and it's got to be lowercase, just like this. The next thing that we need to do is uh, we need to create a snippet, which is pretty easy. You just go to your snippets tab, and you click new snippet. Um, I've already created this, and it's called chunk parser. You know, make sure it's spelled just like this. And then you're going to want to paste uh, this code into it. And again, you can just head right over to my site and you'll see this code is, is right there. And you can just copy it and you can just paste it right into the, the snippet code and click Save. And then the next thing that you need to do is go to the template that you want this to to exist on and for me I made sort of a test template called sortable sidebar and then from looking at this is a pretty simple template um, over in the sidebar which for me was div class span 8 um, I make the snippet call and basically what it's going to do here is that snippet called chunk parser is going to run and any chunk that I um, that I both activate here um, is going to be is going to be output right here inside of the sidebar, and it's also going to get wrapped into a div called sidebar chunks. So what I'd like to do now is just take you a little bit through uh, our custom sort uh, file so that you can get a sense of what's going on in each different part of the file. The first thing that we do is include uh, jQuery and also the jQuery UI which will enable us to add the sortable fashion to our custom TV input type. Um, you'll see that jQuery is called here in a no conflict way so that it doesn't conflict with uh, the mood tools which is running in the back end of modx jQuery you know is on document ready is is opened and then what it's doing is grabbing this unordered list with an ID of sortable and turning it into a sortable list it is also saying that it's only sortable along the y-axis which means it's only sortable going up and down um, you'll also see that for any list item that has a checkbox that is checked inside, it's adding a uh, class of selected to it. And if uh, you click on the list item, it's going to then check the checkbox, which is great. And also, um, that's what this is saying here where if you, um, it will also uh, toggle the class on the list item and make it, it'll toggle it and make it selected 
if it's unselected already, and if it's already selected, it'll make the class unselected. Um, let's see. I've also added some styling to it, which you can amend so it works for you. Um, I just tried to make it as usable as possible for me. Um, and then down here is where we get into the custom input type code. Uh, we have to open it with PHP tags and close it with PHP tag at the bottom. You'll notice here, and this is where my version of the file is different than Stefan's version, because I've hard-coded into this file the name of the category from which the chunks will get pulled uh, in your back in the back end of your website to give you choices for your uh, sortable list and I've just created that uh, category of sidebar. Earlier I told you that it was important to make sure that it was lowercase s and this is why because it's hard coded in. Um, and then what it's going to do is uh, give you a little bit of direction uh, which will appear directly over the unordered list which tells you and your client what to do and how to use the list. Uh, it starts the list here and then what it does is it looks into the database to see if there are already any saved values and it turns the, the selected values um, becomes an array and the unselected values becomes an array and if there are no selected values uh, this code, of course, can be refactored, but this was how I did it. Um, if there are no select values, nothing happens. And then um, if there are more than zero selected values for each selected value as set, echo a list item with a class checked. And then you have to give it the value of set with the name of TV um, field ID with the array bracket. But um, the main things are that each input has to have a name and it also has to have an on change document dirty equals true. Those were the things that I took out of his, uh, his tutorial. Um, and then for each of these list items, there's going to be an input type checkbox inside of it. And for the ones that are selected, it's going to echo out uh, checked equals checked. And then it's going to close off that input type. And then it's going to echo out a label. And the label is going to be the name of uh, the chunk that's been selected. Below that in the file, I basically used uh, Sean McCormick or Splitting Red's code um, from his tutorial. So basically there's there's a variable called Q underscore chunks and then modx is doing a, a query of the database and it's selecting a chunk from the table called site HTML snippets as chunk and it's interjoining with another table called categories as category on chunk dot category equals category ID where category dot category in category and this part's important right here because this right here is the variable that you've set up here and so it's gonna look in whatever category you set here and this spelling and case sensitiveness is very important in order for it to match uh, how it works in your back end and then you're going to order it by name. And then these chunks are going to create an array. And then while, while there's, there are, there's an array of chunks, um, it's, going to, it's going to create an array of chunks from the row or name. So it's going to create an array of the, uh, of the chunks. And then for each of this array as set, if it's in array set or the selected values, which is this array up here, 
then do nothing otherwise echo out a list item with a class of unchecked. And basically what this whole thing does is that if it's in the array of selected values, it echoes out a list item with a checkbox inside it that's checked. And then for any any of these, these chunks that have not been selected before, it echoes out a list item that's unchecked. Um, and then it closes out your unordered list, and that's the whole PHP file. And the end result of all of this stuff is that uh, when you go in the front end of the page, you look here on your content page, it will, it will watch what it does here. If I select these two, even though they're separated, and I click Save, what's going to happen is that it's going to show them, it's going to show them together like this. Um, notice before, and, and it outputs all the list items that are selected first, and then the unselected list items it outputs second, and then um, it saves, it saves, you know, the, uh, the order of them after I, after I click save. Even if I uncheck it, you'll notice that it'll go three, two, then one after I click save. And there you go. Isn't that cool? So that's kind of the goal of what we're working towards. And then um, hopefully that helped a lot. And I'd love to hear from you.